Ryan, we do have a quorum. I suspect there may be a few more people straggle in, but whenever you're ready to get started. Okay, that's fine. I think um, I think we can go ahead and get started right now. It's 1.31. Um, we've got the initial call to order and introductions. Gordon, I know you mentioned we had one new person join the committee. Is uh, Kelly, I think is what you said. Are we still yeah. waiting for Kelly? Yes, I'm not sure that he signed in yet, though. Okay. Well, maybe let's just give it another minute or two and see if Kelly comes on. If so, I'd like to have us each go around and uh, introduce ourselves for just a minute. Just let us know uh, your name and which agency or, or company you're with for the benefit of Kelly, who's new to our committee, and also for us to um, meet him. So let's see if he logs on in the next minute or two, and then we'll start that. Um, while we're waiting, you may want to go ahead and do the call to the audience. I don't believe we have or haven't received any comments, but um, okay, go ahead and do that formal call to the audience portion while we wait for everybody to log in. Sure, sure, great idea. And so, yeah, moving on to agenda item number two, we'll come back to item number one. So, agenda item number two is the call to the audience. This is an opportunity that will be provided to members of the public to provide input through written comment to the standard specifications and details committee on items that are not on the agenda that are within the jurisdiction of MAG or on items on the agenda for discussion, but not for action. Members of the public are asked to submit written comments related to this meeting through the MAG website at www.azmag.gov forward slash comment and indicate for which meeting the, co the comment is intended Comments may be sent at any time leading up to the meeting, but must be received at least one hour prior to the posted start time for the meeting. Comments received prior to the deadline will be read aloud during the meeting. Comments must not exceed three minutes in length. A total of 15 minutes will be provided for the call to the audience agenda item, unless the chair of the standard specifications and details committee requests an exception to this limit. Please note that the comments received for agenda items posted for action will be read at the time the item is heard. To attend the meeting by technological means, members of the public may access the link to watch a video stream on the MAG website by clicking on the view and listen link provided under the related link section at the uh, listed website here. I won't read that whole thing. Um, as mentioned, uh, Gordon, there weren't any uh, comments or, or other items from the public prior to this meeting. That's correct. Okay, all right. Well, let's go ahead and go back to agenda item number one. I would like to do uh, the, the uh, introductions. And I know most of us have been on the committee for a little while, but uh, I think it's always good for us to do kind of a refresher. So if we can go through the order, um, Gordon, I know you have logged people as they've uh, logged in. But uh, Gordon, if you wouldn't mind, as you as you mention uh, each person by name, if that person would be uh, willing to turn the camera on for just a minute at least, so that uh, you can do an introduction, tell us your name, what agency or company you're with, and um, go from there. And then Gordon, you can go through one at a time and call out people um, okay. that are in attendance. Sure, we'll so, start with uh, Jim Badowich from Avondale. I believe he just logged on. He, he's there. Yeah, Gordon, you did the dirty work. You uh, you told everyone who, where he's from. So I guess that makes yeah. sense. It, it'll be it'll just be easy. You can turn your camera on and wave just like Jim just did when you when he calls your name. <laughs> we'll, we'll go that route. Okay, uh, Craig Sharp. Sharp, sorry, Craig Sharp from Buckeye, and um, Warren White from Chandler. Hey, everyone. We uh, we have not received a, a new representative from El Mirage yet, but we should be getting one 
pretty soon, I think. Uh, next from Gilbert, we have AJ Karen. You might need to say something in order for your camera to come to the top of the heap. But... Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm AJ from the town of Gilbert. Thanks. Uh, Abdul Rashid from Glendale. Good afternoon. It's Abdul Rashid, the city of Glendale. Uh, Marty Crossland from Goodyear. I don't know if he's on yet. And Carl Rockwell. I haven't seen him log on yet either. But I did want to mention that um, he was approved as the new vice chair for this year. Uh, Ryan Nichols, of course, has already started the meeting. Uh, Dan Neeson from Peoria. Hi, everybody. And I'm always afraid I'm going to pronounce people's names incorrectly. Um, the new the new member from Phoenix, his name is Kelly Petrich. Are you on yet? Um, I did want to mention that um, he is also in charge of Phoenix's supplement to uh, the MEG specification. So he is um, he is knowledgeable about the things that we do here. So it'll be good to have him on on board. Also from Phoenix, uh, Matthew Bryan. Hello, how are you doing? Good to see you. Happy New Year. Thank you. Uh, Roy Harrington from Scottsdale. Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. Roy, city of Scottsdale. Sorry, I don't have a, uh, have a camera. Uh, David Mobley from Surprise. Hi, everybody. Dave Mobley, how are you doing? <laughs> Bashir Hassan from Tempe. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Happy New Year. Uh, great. Greg Arrington from Youngtown. I don't believe he's logged in yet. And then we've got several um, industry representatives representing Arizona Rock Products Association. Greg uh, Gronberg. Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. Uh, Southwest Asphalt is the company, by the way. And Jeff Hearn. Hello, everybody. Uh, Salt River Materials Group. Uh, representing AGC is Brian uh, Gallimore and Joe Malone. Joe Malone here with Hayden. I haven't Hello. seen Brian log in yet. Uh, from SRP, Christina Hanush. I think I marked this on the wrong one. Uh, Paul Nebaker, are you on? Uh, another independent who I know is on is Peter Kenderis. Good afternoon, everybody. Peter Kenderis with Joy Gray. Good to see you here, be here for another year. Thank you. And then representing, representing the Arizona Utility Contractors Association, we have Harvard Weidmark, who I know is uh, not present because he's on a vacation right now. And I am also here myself. I think that covers everyone. Thank you, Gordon. Appreciate it. And, and of course, we uh, appreciate all your service, Gordon, and everything you do for the committee. You keep us running. And I think everyone recognizes that, especially the past two years has been difficult. By the way, I got to say, a lot of you guys look really good after two years of not meeting in person here, uh, you know, seeing you on the camera again. It's You guys all look good. So, um, before we move into the next agenda item, we want to recognize uh, Craig for his service as the chair of the committee the last couple of years. Gordon has prepared a certificate that uh, we will work on getting to Craig in some form or another. But uh, I don't know if you, Gordon, if you want to, do you have the copy of that? Do you want to pull that up or? Uh, yeah, can you see it now? Yeah, we can see it. I can see it. There we go. So uh, certificate of appreciation for Craig Sharp, honoring the outstanding leadership as chair of the Maricopa Association of Governments, Standard Specifications and Details Committee. And um, I don't know if we want to read through all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> Craig, do you want me to read through all that stuff? I think oh, we're good. <laughs> we're good. We're good. We appreciate it, though. Thank you. Yes. So basically, it says thank you for all your hard work, your leadership uh, during the pandemic. I'll point that part out. 
uh, quite quite the reign as chair with only a couple months in person before that all changed and um, all the efforts you put into it. And, and I know aside from being the chair, you, you put a lot of time and effort into the cases and, and sponsoring cases and being involved. So uh, again, I wanna thank you for your time and, and all the, the effort you put in the committee. And I, I know that other members of the committee share the same sentiment. Yes, so thank, thank you, you for thank that. You. Thank you. Okay. Um, Moving on to item number three, approval of the September 1st, 2021 meeting minutes. Uh, this will be a requested action for approval. If you haven't had a chance to review those yet, please take a minute to do so now. If you haven't reviewed them for the last four months, you might wanna take a, a minute and review them now also. And then we'll call to action here in just a minute. And just as a reminder, uh, Ryan, since we're doing these uh, virtually, we need to do roll call um, on the uh, individual votes. Yeah, I wish I would have taken that speed reading course back then. <laughs> You're not reading them as I was scrolling up. Just look for your name, Jim. <laughs> That's what worries me it's too many times. <laughs> okay. Um, hopefully you had a chance to review them on your own prior to that. Um, Gordon did scroll through it a, a little bit uh, right there also, but uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes at this time. Ryan, I'll go ahead and motion for approval. Thank you, Craig. Second. Second. Okay, I think we got Dan on that. Yes. Okay, and Gordon, will you go through the roll call? Um, Avondale? Yes. Buckeye? Yes. Chandler? Yes. Gilbert? Yes. Glendale? Yes. Goodyear? Not present. Maricopa County? Also not present. Mesa? Yes. Peoria? Yes. Phoenix? Yes. Sorry about that, Gordon. Sure. Uh, Scottsdale? Yes. Surprise? Yes. Tempe? Yes. And Youngtown? I don't believe they're present. So the motion, so I do not want. And 11? Looks like. Okay, thank you very much. Moving on to item number four, the staff report. And there's a few items for, uh, for us to discuss here. And I think um, Gordon will turn the time over to you to take us through those couple items. Sure, uh, the first thing is the uh, meeting calendar included in the packet. There's this page that lists the upcoming meetings for the year. And again, we're gonna be meeting generally the first Wednesday of each month at 1.30. Um, we had hoped to begin meeting in person this year, but with the uh, outbreak of the Omicron and the spike that we're having right now, uh, Meg decided to cancel the in-person meetings for January. 
And I'm not sure at this point when we're going to uh, have the in-person meetings again. Um, I think we're kind of just taking it month by month and seeing what's happening. Um, in either case, we're going to have uh, the virtual op option open for all of the meetings this year. When we are able to meet again in person, uh, we do have the Ironwood Room where we typically met in the past um, reserved for those meetings. Does anyone have any questions or concerns about any specific date or conflicts they may have that we should look at? If, if not, I can move on to the next item which is the 2022 revision that we completed last year. Um, we just received the printed update packets uh, from the printer yesterday. And uh, they've, so they're, they've been posted online and uh, they're also now available for sale. So if you want to order um, new books for your agency, uh, you can do it from our website at this page. Uh, essentially, we still had a, um, some 2021 books in our inventory. So if someone orders a new book, they're just going to get a 2021 book with the 2022 update packet that they can put in themselves. And then if you've already got an up-to-date book, uh, our, our um, mail room will be mailing all of the committee members their own copy. Normally we just hand them out at the meeting at the beginning of the year, but this year we're just gonna mail them out to you. But if you have additional books um, at your agency that you wanna update, you'll need to order the update packet here, which is um, available for $5 and $3 shipping. If someone happens to have like a 2020 edition and they didn't update last year, you can just order both update packets instead of a new book and update it that way. Um, the PDF version has been posted. It was posted on this meeting page, but it's also posted on our main specs and details page where you can, you know, view it online. And so this will take you to the new 2022 revision. Um, if you click on the Meg logo, it'll take you to the table of contents. When you click on any item on the table of contents, it'll take you to that section. And if you want to go back to the table of contents, just click on the MAG logo on the bottom of the page. So this is a way to kind of quickly navigate different sections of the book. Um, if, if it's been revised, there's a little marker next to it showing that that section has been revised. So, you know, we did some work on section 601. So if you wanted to check that and see um, some of the new changes are marked with the little bars on the side. Here's the new table. That was the majority of the changes from last year. So, um, you know, that's, that's one of the, the things you may want to just double check or, you know, as people are starting to implement projects this year, keep in mind the changes that we've, that we've made. The uh, details are also here and they work similarly. You can click on the logo and then click on any detail. Click on the MAG logo to go back to the table of contents. Um, the update packet, if you don't want to purchase an update packet, but maybe you just want to copy them yourselves and then put it in some books, you can just download the file right here and do it yourself if you want. Although this one has the seven holes already drilled in it, so um, it may be easier just to order them. And then the details are also available. If you want to download all the CAD details, you want to make changes to a detail this year, and you need the original, you can just download this zip file that, inc that includes all of them. So that's pretty much the update for this year, unless there's uh, any other questions. Okay, not hearing any questions. Thank you, Gordon, for your work again, getting that published and out on the website and getting all that ready to go. Sure.
Moving on, we have a couple of cases uh, that are carryover cases from last year. So item five on our agenda, case number 21-14, new landscaping related specifications. The last time that we had updates to this case was July 27th, 2021. And these are for the new landscaping specifications that are proposed, uh, pretty much a significant overhaul to the existing specifications in MAG. And um, those have been provided out. Last I heard, there haven't really been any comments from the agencies on those, and there haven't been a lot of changes being made. Um, I did not get an update prior to this meeting, so I don't think there's anything new to share on those. Uh, unless there's any questions, we could um, discuss those if you have any questions. But otherwise, I'd encourage you to present those to the people within your organization that may need to review them and provide comments. And again, this is obviously the first month of the, of the year, but ideally, since we've been working on this throughout all of last year, uh, we would prefer that, that we address these comments sooner in the year and, and kind of get these cases taken care of and not carry them throughout the entire year if we don't need to. So are there any questions on uh, case number 2114 with the new landscaping related specifications. Mr. Chairman, this is Peter Neris. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, in our uh, working group meeting from December, we did, this is a supplemental, but we did get uh, some comments from the city of Tempe. So we, we did get the first comments coming on in. Um, <clears throat> we do definitely, as you said, need to get a good thorough vetting of these changes. Great. Uh, thank you. And, and uh, sorry, I didn't uh, recognize your work on this case earlier as we we're talking about it. Were, were there any updates or comments from Tempe that are items for us to discuss today or are those things that are being reviewed by the committee still? Yes, they're still being reviewed by the, the working group on that. So <clears throat> nothing really to report on that other than uh, uh, I want to make sure there was a recognition that Tempe has started getting, it was the first one to get us some comments in on that. All right. Excellent. It's not too late for someone to get second place. <laughs> okay. Any other questions or comments on that case? Okay. Hearing none. So moving on to item number six on our agenda, case 21-15, new landscaping details. Again, these last were updated in July of 2021. Uh, similar to the landscape uh, related specifications, these are uh, something that the working group has been working on to get incorporated. There, I think there's still some discussion that needs to happen about how these are going to be incorporated into uh, the, the MAG details book uh, with detail numbers and, and ultimately if they go into the standard details book or if it ends up in the supplemental out of right of way book that we've talked about. I think that's kind of some of the last discussion we've had on that. But these landscaping details are mostly new details. And as far as I'm aware, I'm guessing Tempe maybe had a few comments on those also. Um, but otherwise we haven't received any comments that I'm aware of. Peter, go ahead and if you have any additional information. Yeah, these actually originated with the city of Tempe. So they are part of their supplements and they've been uh, pretty much lifted in whole uh, for this. Uh, we did note that there are a few other agencies that do have supplemental details. We've noticed that different uh, numbering systems have been used, different series numbers by different agencies. So that is probably a priority that we do need to, uh, as this moves forward, get a series number established because these ones are for inside the right of way. These would go in or intended for going in uh, the, the existing standards book. Uh, I, I can get you some suggested ones, but uh, we just probably need to come up with an idea of how we want to do that uh, in a new series. Okay, thank you. Does, that, does anyone have questions or comments on these at this point? Just a, just a question, Peter and, and Brian. Looks like ideally, I mean, a lot of these are similar to Chandler's details as well, although we have a few additional ones. I don't know if you had any consideration, maybe like we have an emitter access, access box, um, just some few additional ones. 
I don't know if you had any uh, others planned in, uh, to add down the road maybe. Yeah, I think, um, Peter, I'll, I'll let you provide details, but my understanding is we, we started off with the landscaping specific details. And I think the intent is to add irrigation um, details after we kind of knock through some of these landscaping ones. Yes, and, and you're absolutely correct on that, that a case to be presented later this year will be both the, the uh, standards, the specifications, and the details for the irrigation components. So that, that's being worked on by the working group still. Uh, they wanted a little bit more time. We felt that uh, it was important to get something out last year to get this process moving forward. But uh, yeah, Warren, that, that definitely is going to be incorporated in here. Thank you. And you probably said that last year, but I've forgotten. Thank you. No worries. Okay, any other questions or comments on the landscaping details case? Okay, moving on to uh, item number seven on our agenda, miscellaneous corrections, case number 22-01. This is the typical case that we do each year where we uh, include any of the minor corrections, miscellaneous uh, changes to the, to the specifications that are deemed small enough not to require their own cases. And uh, I believe, Warren, you may have made a recommendation on uh, an item to add to our miscellaneous corrections case is our first item. Uh, yes, if, if the committee is open to this being a miscellaneous correction, it's pretty minor. Um, now that this detail is fairly widely used throughout the valley uh, since we've added it, um, one thing did come up where we have used it. Um, I'm sure others have in commercial driveways as well. Again, this is just retrofits. So I don't, this isn't the, the go-to for all cases, but where we need to maintain and, and um, for rehab projects and things like that, this is a pretty useful detail, but um, just wanted to make sure when you do have a commercial driveway, you're having a thicker uh, concrete, concrete uh, section. So it looks like the, the title of the detail is retrofit driveway, which is which is leaves it open to any style or type of driveway or alley entrance. And so currently the the detail specifies a thickness for the residential type of driveway and it specifies a thickness for the alley, but it doesn't specify thickness for, for other types of driveways, which it may be used for. So I guess your suggestion is suggestion is that the eight inch alley thickness or the eight inch thickness for the alley should also be used for commercial type driveways. Is that? Exactly. Correct, okay. Questions, comments from committee members? And is this something people feel like is considered a miscellaneous correction, minor enough detail? Yeah, I don't know. It's, you're kind of, you're kind of expanding the application. So I don't know if that would be a blooper in my, my mind. Um, and then other thing is that in Avondale, we have a supplement and we use, we use nine inch for um, any, any commercial driveways. So. I remember that Jim, for, and for curb ramps, we had topic uh, thickness discussions too. But I mean, so, yeah, you know, eight inch is better than six inch. So I, I'd, I'd support it. I'm also but, curious as to if you need that and sign, if that confuses people thinking that you can use either six or eight inches for residential and alleys or, or commercial. That's a good thought. Gordon, I thought about striking that too, so. Yeah, I think if we were just deleting the and, that would be a blooper, but to, to Jim's point, I think um, introducing a specific thickness on the commercial driveway itself may warrant it being its own case because that's not necessarily a correction uh, other than uh, rather than an interpretation or addition to interpretation on the detail. Fair enough. I'm, I'm happy to submit it as a case if that's preferred. Any yeah, other? I mean, it's an easy case. So. Yeah. Right. Okay, any other 
comments or, or questions, thoughts on that? Is this a red mark on here for a reason or was that just a mistake? Mistake. Okay. Okay. Well, Warren, if you want to submit that as a, as a proposed case, then I think we can move through that. And, and as mentioned, I, I don't think it, at least at the outset, it doesn't appear to be a difficult case to move forward. And hopefully we can take that through fairly uh, quickly unless people start looking in too much detail and come up with all kinds of other changes they want, which you never know, that may happen. That's fine. Thanks, Ryan. Okay, are there any other miscellaneous corrections, uh, potential cases? I think there could be some that are uh, in the list I provided in the packet. Um, if someone wants to take a look and some of them, uh, this was uh, one that I submitted last year based on some, some of the things I noticed as I was kind of compiling the new edition. And we took care of uh, this detail 321 last year, but there are a few other ones in here that we might want to take a look at. Um, even some super easy ones like this uh, detail 534-4, it's referencing the 1983 edition of the ASTM, which we probably just want to take that off and have the most recent version. But if there's anything on here that someone you know, would like to include or make updates to that, you know, I could easily mark up in detail if you wanted to add it. Okay, and this is, this is, this list is, um, was included in the packet so people can go reference the packet and go back and take a few minutes to go through and look at each one of these and try to understand them and, and we can make some suggestions in the next meeting on these items. Yeah, for example, the first one, there is no A, ASTM A54 anymore, but someone with more knowledge would need to de determine what the correct ATS, ASTM to reference would be. Uh, same thing, we're referencing CAD, cadmium bolts, which we took out of some of the specs, but they're still referenced in this detail. Um, There's several places where it's uh, referencing specific manufacturers that we may just want to take off their names on a couple of these details, things like that, that aren't necessarily very difficult to do, uh, but someone may need to take a look at it or be willing to sponsor it. Gordon, I was just working on a spec that references an old one for another client that referenced A54, uh, and I think it's been replaced by A107. So yeah, there have been some changes on these. So that was the sheet that I included, um, but on the agenda, there was a list of other potential cases that were brought up during meetings last year, and I just listed a few of them. So depending on you know who who may have uh, been interested in proposing it you may want to get information from them on them. Sure. Okay. And that's, and so let's go ahead and move on to that item then, um, which is item number eight for new and potential cases. Aside from the miscellaneous corrections, which we typically have, there are um, a few other items that have been discussed. Uh, they're listed here on the agenda. The sidewalk cross slope uh, calculations was one of those. Uh, section 610.10D waterline construction related to outdated pipe gaskets. Um, section 103.6.2 indemnification of the contracting agency against liability. And uh, item six here, working groups, if there's any potential cases that come out of those. And we can talk about those if we, as we do working group uh, reports, if there are any reports from working groups. Um, so those are the other cases that we talked about last year as, as potential cases being proposed. 
are there any of those items that people would like to discuss at this time? Does anyone recall what the sidewalk cross slope calculations was? I'm trying to remember. That was one that Carl Rockwell oh. um, brought forward. So he had, he had created a sketch and done some calculations where he didn't think that they matched up quite right. So I think he is planning to prepare a case on that. But since he's not here today, I'm not sure what the status of that is. OK, any other questions, comments? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, I've got a, a comment. I don't know, maybe this is a blooper item, but um, detail number 420-1. That's a concrete sanitary sewer mantle. And we, we've ran into this problem in the field a few times. Is note number six um, says any manhole over 20 feet shall require engineer structural calcs. And I, the problem is, is that there's interpretation is that where is 20 feet of, was that to the bottom of the base or the top of the, over the top of the pipe? So I don't know if that's something that could be clarified with a blooper case, but um, I'd like to look at that. We can discuss it in the, working group, you know, down the road, but it's, it's just something I think oh, note six should be clarified. It's just, it's just not very clear. Yeah, no, that's, uh, thank you for bringing that up. I actually had a contractor, may, maybe the same one <laughs> that, that you've been working with, but I had a contractor reach out to me and ask me for my interpretation of it. And I pointed out that the interpretation of the uh, contract is to the engineer as defined in the MAG specifications. So while, while I could offer my thoughts, I was definitely not gonna interpret <laughs> the contract documents. But I think that's a fair question is, is where does that measurement come you know, from, from where, from rim to what point or whatever it is. I think that's a great question and something that can be clarified in the detail for sure. So is, is that something you wanna bring up in the working group as a discussion item first to Kind of yeah, we, the, we, yeah, we should do that. And then we can just treat it as a case. Hopefully it'll be easy. Uh, but again, it's just when we just, it should be clarified. Is it, is it to the bottom of the base or is it top of the pipe? You know, we just, it should be clarified. Because it's come up with, it's like I said, it's caused some confusion and questions in the field. So <clears throat> especially okay, if you've got large, especially if you've got large diameter pipe. I mean, you, you could be talking, you know, two foot difference. So <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Okay, great, thank you. So Gordon, if we wanna add that to our potential cases list, we can continue to track that and look for some additional discussion in the working group and, and future discussion on that. Okay. If there are no other items to discuss for, for eight new and potential cases for 2022, we'll move on to item agenda item number nine, plans, uh, cover sheet signature requirements, and I know there was some emails that went out since our last meeting uh, to uh, discuss this. Um, and I'm trying to remember who's, who had brought that up. If it was um, Abdul, if that was that, was that from your group, the, the yeah. questions on cover sheets? Can you kind of talk us through a little bit about your questions and thoughts on that? So uh, a few months ago, we had an internal meeting uh, about the cover sheet signature requirements and we're looking into city codes or any uh, uh, state code, Arizona device statute. We couldn't find any cases which uh, specify that the signature requirements by the, the directors, by the city engineer and other folks. So that's, we, that's where we started this discussion and we raised it to Mag and see uh, if there are anything in our specifications, any standardized signature block, which requires any, which is based on any regulations. So that's where the email conversation, the email is up here, which I uh, wrote a couple of months ago. Uh, since then we have discussed, uh, we in our city code, I haven't seen anything other than the city engineer signature requirements, but other folks, it's still a question mark. Uh, a lot of people, they tend to resist so why I need to sign on plans which I haven't looked at. So that's where the comment came in. And also we wanted to see if there is any uh, language which should come like uh, 
accepting the plans in concept. I have seen some cities uh, from my consulting background 15 years ago, uh, some tend to accept in concept and uh, make the designer liable. Some do not use that language. So whenever there's a, a public conflict, uh, they tend to use the S word to the city. So I wanted to see what are the group's thoughts about it, uh, if there is any need of standardizing any language and signature requirements. Okay. Um, well, we'll open up to the committee if, if people have thoughts that they wanna share on that or questions or have discussion points, if we can have some discussion at this time, that'd be great. Yeah, in Avondale, Avondale, we have we have a our, we have a standard cover sheet that we use for uh, development projects. Um, I don't know; it might it might be hard to come up with a standardized one for Mag because every city has different, you know, things they want to see on there. But um, so I don't know how how hard that would be to come up with a standardized one for Mag, but um, we can try, I guess. <clears throat> Yeah, Abdul, this is Craig out in Buckeye. So I reached out to our, our ma my management group and asked the same question, got a response back that, the, you know, uh, the response from our deputy city engineer was talking about that the signature block on the cover sheet is something that typically is left to the discretion of each of the cities. Um, but he did bring in a, a question that changing it too much could potentially get into legal issues. Um, and he suggested reaching out to legal counsel to see if they had any input on on, on their thoughts. So kind of kind of ran it up the ladder real quick, but uh, that was that was what I got back from my group. Hey Craig, this is this is Warren. That's about what I recall in our past discussions too. Is there are some similarities between we have like, like Jim, we have a standard uh, CIP cover sheet, and then it's very similar language that is also used on private development. But for private development, we have a block that requires the engineer to certify ADA um, for the site as well. <clears throat> so we have some unique things. And then, and then of course, there's additions for signatures for Maricopa County Environmental Service Department as required, flood control district as required, those kind of things uh, that might be unique to the project where you need those signatures. Yeah, and you're not you're not gonna and then like we we have differences between water and sewer, you know, that accommodate signatures for the county health department. So you're not talking just one; you might have two or three different sheets, and they're all going to be different from the city. So. I'll, I don't know. I think it's a real challenge. I mean, it, it's a good idea, but I just think at the end of the day, you're not, not, not a lot of age, a lot of people won't be able to use it because everybody's going to have their own. So. Yeah. My, my initial thoughts are, are similar. I think that there's enough differences and, and uh, touching on to the legal issues, every municipality, every um, agency is going to have different legal counsel with different potentially different thoughts and, and considerations on that, which makes it really difficult to create a standard that, that people are using. So I'm not sure that I see a lot of value in creating a, a standard signature block or, or um, language that may get into legal aspects so much uh, as, as far as cover sheets and plans go. There, there was something interesting that you said that caught my attention though which was a lot of times uh, as a municipality, we hear back what you said, um, which is, hey, you guys reviewed it and approved it. Therefore, you guys should have some type of obligation responsibility for the information that's in the plans. And I think the intent is that the engineer of record really carries that responsibility. And that, the, as you mentioned, the, the, the cities aren't reviewing it for quality control, for um, conformance with every uh, specific design element. Rather, they're doing a, a general conformance review versus design standards and whatnot. 
so that, that was an interesting thought. And I don't know if our specifications uh, dive into that uh, in, in any level or measure or any degree, or if there's a place for our specifications to kind of lay out the responsibilities of the engineer of record um, versus municipalities. That's, that's definitely a, a thought that, that is intriguing to me. But as far as cover pages and, and approval blocks, I'm not sure that's something that I see us moving forward with. Yeah, our, our legal made us put a disclaimer on there about just exactly what you're talking about, Ryan. So, and we only cool. review it for concept, you know, and, and that type of thing. So every city might be a little different. So that's what I mean. I mean, you know, you're going to have, if, if we agreed on one, you know, nobody's, a lot of the agencies aren't going to use it. So I, I don't know what the, I don't know what the, I don't know if it's going to serve any need. So. <clears throat> At one point uh, uh, in the past, MAG specs actually had sample contracts in them. Uh, but since no one was using them, because every city had their own different take on it, uh, they were removed. This was probably about 10 years ago. So you might have a similar situation where everybody wants to do it a little differently. Yeah, Ryan, kind of to your point, to Jim's point, ours is the same way. Or we've got it where we approve the plans for concept only and we accept no liability for errors or omissions. That's actually how it's written. So. So one element I'm still uh, interested to hear some thoughts on, are there any requirements in the Arizona device statutes about city or um, the municipality being accepting it, either in concept or uh, uh, other conditions which we can put upon. I don't know. That's a legal discussion. Right. Yeah. As I say, I'm not aware of anything, but also I don't know all the ins and outs of the Arizona Revised Statutes either. <clears throat> All right, well, thank you. I think it was a constructive discussion. So we'll convey the message to our management and it sounds more like a legal issue. So thank you. One thing I'd like to point out is, although I tend to agree standardization is a great way to go, <clears throat> these are construction standards. A lot of these requirements are really related to design and uh, approval and or authorization or changes toward design. Uh, always just recommend thinking about how would this affect a contractor or in a contractor doing their work relative to the document that we've got here. Great, excellent point, Peter, thank you. Okay, if there's no further discussion on that, we can move into item 10 on the agenda. Our working group reports, um, there may not be much to discuss on these, but we'll go ahead and, and run through each working group and, and get a report if there uh, is one. So starting off with our water sewer working group uh, with Jim. Okay, um, yeah, I'm just trying to find the last the, uh, minutes here. And see, uh, we had a couple items that were kind of carryover discussion items. Um, Yeah, I don't know. It's going to take me too long to find them, but we had a couple items that we were going to talk about. Um, the curvature of pipe or water lines. Um, we wanted to also this year tackle maybe look, look at a specific testing spec for force mains. Um, because right now we currently try to enforce the uh, water for, for potable water pressure test of 200 PSI for two hours. And um, a lot of engineers are telling us that's overkill and um, you know some of these pipes a lot of the force mates now are, are HDPE welded pipe um, so it just seems we need a separate test for that because it's, it seems like the water one isn't really applicable so I want to look at that this year um, and the other one I just you know mentioned earlier in the meeting today is about the uh, clarifying the detail there's a couple other ones too but um, so we're looking for another hopefully a good year. Um, 
the pandemic with the supply shortages has caused a few concerns too that we want to get into. Um, but uh, anyways, our, our, we're, I like to stick to our, our schedule we've used in the past few years of, of meeting the third Tuesday of every month at 1.30 if that works for everybody. So the next meeting uh, would be on the uh, January 18th at 1.30 as a day after um, MLK Day. So does that work for everybody for the next first meeting of the year for our working group? Jim, do you have an email list you can send out that request and get comments on? Yeah, I'll do that. We'll use the same one. Uh, Gordon, if you can maybe send that to me again. So, But yeah, I'll send out a, a draft uh, um, table, uh, what do you call it, agenda. So, are, th are those still being done virtually? Yes. Yeah, I've got a, uh, a, an email list um, that keeps track of that group. Yeah, we'll start off virtually only, so we'll see how it goes. We'll kind of follow the lead of, of uh, our, the general committee here. Okay, great. Thank you for that update. Uh, our next group, Asphalt Materials Concrete Working Groups. Our chairs, Greg, Brian, and Jeff. Well, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, Thanks, first thing being um, to continue on where... Uh, Jim just left off, we'll continue to meet on the third Thursday of the month, um, which would be in the first meeting would be on January 20th. Uh, continue virtually um, going, uh, having ARPA host the uh, virtual meeting on the go to meeting uh, format that they utilize as we have done the last year and a half or so. That meeting will be at, at noon. We may in that first meeting have some conversation since we're we're no longer doing lunch. I think maybe um, noon, uh, we could change the, the time, but we, we'll keep it that way for the first meeting and maybe have that conversation in the first meeting, see if anyone wants to move that time one way or the other off that, that, that noon time frame. Um, a few things that we have discussed since, uh, since our last meetings that have been brought up to, to us that I would mention uh, on potential cases, um, one is the um, doing some update to section 701 and 702, um, leading us to 728 on CLSM, particularly relating to recycled materials. There's been a, a lot more interest that we, we seem to be getting industry from, from uh, municipalities and agencies about, you know, utilizing recycled, more recycled materials. Um, if you guys remember several years ago, we kind of initiated getting that started in 701, um, some basic definitions and kind of left it at that, that to kind of see how the, how the marketplace would handle those things. And I think we're ready to potentially take a look at maybe broadening the, the um, definitions a little bit more and the usage of those materials, particularly when we start talking about things like CLSM, try to keep the cost down on those kinds of products. So uh, we've been asked to take another look at, look at those. Um, the other thing we've been asked about, uh, particularly from our ADOT counterparts, is the shot. There, ADOT doesn't really have a shot treat specification exactly. It's kind of a hodgepodge or so. And so they have looked at uh, the MAG 525 section um, about uh, potentially uh, utilizing um, that as a uh, a new section in ADOT. So we thought, well, gosh, if they're going to do that, we probably ought to take another look at section 525 ourselves and see if there's some updates that need to be to be done there. So we'll we'll probably do that also. Um, the other thing uh, you guys will remember a few years ago, a couple of years ago, we did some updates to 311 and 312 on cement treated sub subgrade and base. Um, since then, we found there's some still a couple of issues that that we need to clarify better in both of those sections. So we'll we'll be taking another look at those to try to get a few things clarified that are still causing some issues out in the field. Um, and that would be all that I have. I will turn it over then to uh, Greg or Brian if they have anything. 
Nope, nothing at this point. We'll just see what comes out of the out of the first working group meeting and go from there. I think that's a great idea. Thanks. Yeah, I just want to say, you guys, uh, again, thanks a lot for last year for helping out with the uh, densities table. That was you guys were a good group to work with on that. And um, we got we got some more I'd like to talk about. I think Rob will be attending your working group meetings, Rob Godwin. Um, We've had some concerns with the lime tree at AB. So I think we want to look at that. We've had a couple of our CIP projects where the our REs are, aren't, don't say not to use it. They're having problems with it. So I'd like to see if the, what, what actually is going on with that. So, Well, Jim, lime tree at AB is certainly our favorite subject. So we would, yeah, <laughs> as you remember, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be happy to probably have that discussion again. All right. Appreciate it, guys. And I must well, say, I mean, it, it's it's something we got to talk about. And, and, and like you said, with the wrap and that, I mean, we, we all know AB is getting harder to find good quality AB. And so we've got to we've got to we, we do got to deal with embrace, you know, the alternatives and additives because it's just getting to be cost prohibitive. So but at the same time, as we're using this stuff, I think we're having some growing pains or just problems, you know, that from the field that we just need to, you know circle back and see if we need to tweak anything so that that's that's my concern so no you, you're you're absolutely right jim I, I i was trying to be funny there but yeah you're absolutely right and that's one of the reasons why we've been asked about the recycled materials too is um there's some good applications for those kinds of materials but as you know some of the agencies have already um identified um they have to be done properly they have to be done right you can't just throw everything in the kitchen sink into a material base and think that it's going to work the way that uh, that we need it to work. Um, so there there are some things that need to be clarified there and, and um, make sure that we're using the right materials done in the right way. And certainly the lime treated base is the same kind of concept. Um, yeah, and it may end up we end up may happen to tweak some of the testing requirements too because if it's you know a different material you might have to test it differently. So that that's something else we need to look at is are we testing it right? So agreed. the the other the the other thing I would bring up is um, the city of Phoenix has come to ARPA in particular, um, and it's probably along the lines of something you already sort of mentioned, Jim, is, you know, the state of um, the way things are out there now, now, whether you contribute them to COVID, whether you contribute them to um, uh, a, a lot of demand for products, a lot of demand for materials, and so on. We've, we've had an influx of um, different types of ready mix trucks, different um, uh, owner-operated, I guess I would say, vehicles that are not associated with um, ready mix producers, commercial ready mix producers. We have a very uh, robust way of certifying batch plants, whether that's asphalt or whether that's concrete, certifying equipment, making sure that the delivery equipment is providing the materials in a, in a quality way to job sites and so on. And there's been some concerns now, especially with um, from uh, City of Phoenix in particular, but I think some of the other agencies may be seeing it too, um, that you're seeing equipment out there that um, may or may not be questionable when it comes to being able to mix and deliver um, materials in, in, the, in the proper way. So uh, City of Phoenix has asked ARPA to take another look at it. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure ARPA is not the organization to do that, but we'll, certainly want to be part of the discussion. So um, I, I would throw that out to the MAG group too um, and see if, if any of you guys are having issues with those, if you have thoughts about those. Uh, the MAG spec actually in 725 is pretty clear about um, that the equipment must be, must be certified and must be um, done, uh, inspected on a routine basis and, um, in order for it to be used on project sites. So we may have to readdress a, a few things there or reiterate to agencies that they need to be concerned about, about those things. Okay, any other uh, comments?
comments or, or reports from the asphalt materials and concrete group? Brian? Okay, let's move on then. Outside right of way working group uh, report from Peter. Yes, uh, we during the off period, we had three uh, working group meetings, August, uh, November, and December. <clears throat> and as Gordon showing, we do have a, uh, we did send a, a set of meeting minutes, kind of a summary one of the off period as opposed to one for everyone. Uh, in terms of new cases that we're, we're going to be coming out this year, I think the first one uh, we probably would talk about is the uh, one we have in development, that's the vegetated rock bioswale section of details. Eric with City of Tempe is working on those currently. Uh, we did some handoff of that. A lot of it's really just revisions to drafting and uh, making changes per comments we've received. I'm anticipating we're gonna have that ready. Probably, I think there's a good chance depending on Eric's schedule, right around that first meeting of February at the latest, the uh, March meeting. We should be submitting that as a case. Um, in, in addition to that, um, you know, we did talk a minute ago about the irrigation and landscape details, the irrigation details. Uh, we, we do need to kind of refurbish that group. Uh, we need to look for a few people, but I think we're going to be looking, getting those irrigation uh, related details out also. I don't think it's going to be February. I think it's going to be maybe closer to the March timeframe. So we should have those out and ready to go. Other cases that uh, we talked about at the end of the last sessions and that were a higher priority that we've been discussing in the group would be the spillway detail, if you remember right. We took out of the uh, sedimentation-based one, we took the spillway component out as a suggestion being from the committee that we look at providing a separate spillway detail, not quite as robust as the uh, spillway detail that is in the current MAG standard uh, but something more applicable for, for retention detention basins. Uh, I have been looking around. There's not a lot of details, but we have come up with a series of them that are available. And, and I, that's one we will be working on. Eric, you know, at City Tempe said uh, he would probably start, he'd be helping on trying to put that together. And we'll have our first discussion at the, our meeting at the end of the month. Uh, we do anticipate getting that one out. That's just fitting in between what we had before. Uh, there, there's a lot of examples around, but strange enough, there's not a lot of standardization on those details available. But we, we have find, found some. Uh, Salt River Project, ADOT, both had some. The detention tank criteria, Keith Kesty with City of Phoenix has volunteered to work on that using the City of Chandler uh, C509 as the starting point. He also is going to be contacting some of the vendors, and he'll be starting to put together a detention tank uh, uh, detail, uh, in installation criteria detail. Uh, that one's gonna be a bit challenging. I know there's a lot of options associated with it. There's the CMP versions, there's the uh, other manufactured material versions. So we figure that one's gonna be a pretty decent challenge and they are used in pretty much every municipality. So we're Can taking that one on. Yes. Do you mind if I interject real quick on Please. that? Just, just regarding those underground storage tanks. I think we touched on this last year is we have, we've definitely been seeing some failures um, mm -hmm. in our municipality, I'm not sure elsewhere, but um, and it's, it's more prevalent than we'd like it to be. So just uh, in, ter in terms of the, the CMP tanks, um, although the product may, is a good product that there are just some challenges with how it's installed and yes. then when it's not maintained properly in water setting in those, it's, we've definitely seen some issues. There was a presentation a few years ago at uh, the uh, ASCE fall conference. And I know who made that presentation of the consultants. So I was going to reach out to that person who had done some research and study on that, on the failure rates and, and what some of the recommendations they had and see if we could incorporate some of that information too. Yeah, we're seeing we're seeing some options now instead of the CMP pipes. There's that you know I think uh, ADS makes a a system mm -hmm. arch system, um, yes. and then we've seen some new one. I'm, it's brand new. I've never seen it. They use these little squares, these little concrete squares. They're like like a little mini I don't know little mini mantles that get buried. It's interesting, but there's definitely a, a push I think to come up with alternative. 
yes. um, tech alternative, you know, um, systems to, to do that. So, yeah, we, um, we, we referenced the uh, contact ones because they had a, a ser they have a series of different products. Again, they're just as a reference point, but you're correct. Uh, Jim, that there's a number of, of proprietary materials out there. We have to find a way to not give it a proprietary description, but find a generic way to describe those as, and come up with the details so those can also be adapted. Uh, Contact was nice because they've offered uh, some standards and specs they've already developed, which may be a good starting point for us to work off of. Yeah, because the problem is, is you got metal underground and it can you know deteriorate faster than other materials. And so... That, that's that's the concern, you know. So I don't know how you're going to structure that. That's going to be interesting. So. It's. Uh, I was very happy Keith decided to take that on because uh, I definitely need some help on that going after that one. It. The the goal is to get it by uh, J July to get a a, uh, a specific set of standards out so we can start the discussions and debate. I think this was going to carry for a while, but that's good. We feel, finally got it moving off the ground. No, that's good. And then you got other industries involved. So good, good, good start. Uh, the last one we had uh, that we were kind of very intent on looking toward with the drywall standard. We've talked about those before, including the dome structured overflows. I've made a commitment to start working on those later this month. And uh, I do have a lot of uh, prior details from Chandler Avondale. You've all provided them to me before. I'll go pull those out. Plus, I have the vendors to talk to. So I do have kind of a starting point on the uh, on the drywall ones. I do want to get that one in this year. I don't want to keep skipping it for another year and get that one moving forward. Um, we, ha we have a list of series of other ones. We'll see how far we get with those. Anybody who would wish to participate, for example, I get the swing check backflow preventers. I think we'll be talking to the water sewer working group. Again, and see if we can get maybe some help on moving that one forward. <clears throat> uh, the uh, Gabian's wire baskets, I've had a request to look at that. I'm not sure how up on the burner is going to be. Parking lot pavements, we've talked about before. The asphalt working group may be handy there. And then, of course, we've talked about bollards and barricades. Should those stay in the mag? Do we? How, how do we want to do that? And it hasn't been looked at for, it's almost going on two decades, so. Uh, that's some of the stuff we, we've been talking about doing. Uh, we talked about already the uh, numbering of the the other the landscape details. We've seen some 700 and 1,000 series ones. We'll have to get into that. We'll talk about that probably in later groups. We are continuing to meet on the third Thursday right now. It's it's a, it's a MS Teams meeting. Uh, ASU has been very good, and Reichman has been great about uh, putting those together for us. 1130s. And we, had to, we should have one at the, on the 20th of this month. That's all I had from the, from the working group. Any questions? Otherwise, I wanted to bring up one more that I've been approached by that we're developing. And that would be related to MAG 792 and MAG 230, which are the uh, dust palliative uh, detail, uh, the standards, not details. Um, I've been approached to do a major revision for one of our clients, and I looked, and those have not been upgraded in, again, pretty close to 15 plus years. I've been reaching out to the vendors, and apparently methodologies have changed quite a bit, and some of the products some aren't even available anymore. So if there is a uh, desire on MAG, again, I'm doing it for somebody else anyway, I can go ahead and look at uh, making suggested recommendations for modifications to those two details or those two standards. Did you say 792 or? 792, yeah, that's correct. The dust palliative and the other is 230. It's the application of dust palette. It's basically the, the dust palette of details or standards. I'm sorry, keep calling them details. Um, again, we've been uh, brought in to make changes for somebody else. And I thought, well, as long as we're doing it, I should probably offer it this direction too. And Peter, what, what, if that were to go through a working group, which working group do you think it most closely falls under? I'm guessing the, uh, anything to do with, deal with soils, really, it'd be more of the, 
something under the materials like we do with the lime stabilization and all the rest of those. It's just another form of stabilization. So I would suggest it would probably go through that working group. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Not water and sewer, definitely. <laughs> Keep you out of There's that no one. Pipe. I don't see any pipe in there. <laughs> no, no. So probably uh, Jeff and Greg and, yep. uh, and Brian and company would uh, probably be the better person. The labs are also associated with that one. I think that'd be better. But I, I don't want to do something if you don't want it. But uh, again, it's I'm doing well, it anyway Pete. for somebody else. Yeah, Peter, it sounds like, it sounds like you're going to be working on it anyway. And rather than just throw it right at the working group right away to start diving into, it seems like as you go through and you're doing some evaluation and analysis on that, maybe it's something that we can have you present to the working group Very good. Uh, at a few months in the future when, when you've got more uh, qualitative type of items to look at. And, and then we can decide if that working group is, is ready to take on that type of a change. Very good. I'll, I'll, I, I've got to have this done toward uh, the March time frame anyway, so I should be able to provide a report about that time. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of this, a lot of these areas are outside the right of way, so I, I don't remember why I got in here anyway. So. <clears throat> well, it's primarily you do have a number of agencies that are deeply involved with this. The city of Mesa and the city of uh, Scottsdale both have standards related to these that have. Uh, have done some things outside of these two. That's what's being explained to me, that they're utilizing okay. these two standards, but they have some uh, supplemental requirements uh, for these now. Good. Okay, Jeff, Greg, Brian, from the materials, concrete, asphalt working group, does that sound okay if, if uh, Peter presents that at some point after he's gotten some proposed changes? Absolutely. Peter is always welcome in our meetings. All Peter, right. Peter. <laughs> Okay. I have to wait till you have lunch again so I can come on by. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, that's going to happen. Ooh, okay. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you for that uh, report and all the working group reports. So uh, moving on to agenda item number 11, the request for future agenda items, if there's anything we haven't already talked about that uh, any committee members would like for a future agenda, now would be the time to bring those up. Any, is there any interest on discussing uh, changing the one-year warranty standard to two years? I, I understand some agencies already have two years. I think that's something that we should look at. I'm not sure the Home Builders Association would support it, of course. But No, I know it's going to be touchy, but I, I don't know. We're, we're sure we're having issues, and it always happens after the one year. So I just I don't think one year is adequate. Maybe we start with the one year and a quarter this year and a year and a half the next year, Jim, just kind of <laughs> step up. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe it's all how you present it. We'll just say 18 months. It looks better. So. <laughs> hey, Jim, is that on any specific items or is that everything in general? No, that's just in general. So. I mean, yeah, you're right. It's going to be a uh, home builders are, won't like that, but it's just, I don't know what you guys are experiencing, but we're having lots of issues after the one-year warranty. It's just not enough time. So I, I don't know. It's costing so, us, it's costing the cities a lot, it's costing us a lot of money afterwards to fix this stuff. So it's just, that's why they're asking, I'm getting the question asked to me, you know, why don't we do longer warranties? So that's why I'm bringing it up. So, so Jim, would you like to make that a future discussion item just to talk through whether it makes sense to change the warranty period or you and just get feedback from the committee. Um, if we have an agenda item, people can go back and talk internally and then we can just have dialogue and discussion on it first. Or are you proposing something different? I'm just bringing it up right now as a, as a you know, item to see if there's any interest in it. You know, uh, we're interested in looking at it, but I don't know if any other agencies are interested in it. So yeah, hey, Jim, this is Dave Mobley of City of Surprise. Hey, we went to everything that's two-year warranty unless we have uh, we have three subdivisions that actually had development agreements that they're one year. Otherwise, everybody's two-year. That's actually in our standards now. 
Yeah, and I think Goodyear does it, and, and I'm not sure about Buckeye, Craig, but I, I think there's some there's some agencies out there, maybe three or four now, that have adopted the two years. So we may just have to look at it from a supplement standpoint, but I don't know. If there's enough agencies interested, that's why I'm bringing it up, um, Ryan, is maybe maybe we do it through MAG. And just a thought. I think, I think that's a great idea. So are, are you compiling? Is... Are, is your group kind of looking at it already? And is that something that, that you would want to present, like saying, hey, here's what all the agencies do? Or is this just more discussion in general? It's, gauging it's, just, seeing if, it's just seeing if there's interest. So if, 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 uh, if there is interest, then we can start looking at it. So. Okay. Ryan and Jim, this is AJ with the Town of Gilbert. I, I would maybe propose to make it an agenda item for the next meeting and then allow the committee members to go back and maybe get a temperature, you know, within their different engineering groups or development groups and see if it's something that, and then we can have a discussion next month on, is this something that should just be a standard so, or, or a supplement to the standard within cities? Or um, is it maybe if there's enough interest that maybe we start having conversations at a mag level? Okay, great. And I think that's fine. That's what I'm trying to, to figure yeah, out I, I agree. how I we agree. want to approach it. Yeah, I agree, Mr. Chairman. Let's do an agenda item because that way, you know, that way if they'll get, get on the radar screen of the home builders, you know, and then they, we, we can start seeing how, what kind of flack we'll get. But, uh, you know, David, are you, what, what kind of flack have you gotten? Any much flack from the home builders with your stuff for two years? No, actually, we're not getting hardly any. I mean, there's certain uh, developers that are still trying to get it, but since we implemented uh, several years ago, like you say, we were having lots of problems you know, with failures and, you know, because we don't get the, you know, the, the full seasons uh, under the one year warranty. So we just implemented it. They fought us for a while, but now pretty much all the builders know when you come to surprise, you're going to be in a two year development agreement. I mean, that's how they have those at the concept meetings and they all know before they even come in. And we really haven't had no, no pushback on the last two or three years on this. So David, it sounds like you're pretty familiar with how that has been going and surprise is that something that you'd be willing to provide a little bit more details about how it functions for you guys how you implemented yeah. it how you rolled it out and that can be part of our future agenda item yes that wouldn't be a problem i mean like you say i mean it's actually working really good for us and i know my Kristen titler our city engineer she's actually the one that started that when she came on board and i can get all the information from her and get it uh, presented to everybody Okay, I, I like that approach. I, I'm happy to have the discussion and, and gauge the interest of the committee. I feel like um, it, it would be beneficial if people did go back and, and kind of talk to people within their organizations for that discussion. But I also think it would be valuable to kind of have that type of a, a little bit of a, a lead presentation of, about what's been done. And so David, thank you for being willing to do that. So Gordon, yes. we can add that as a future agenda item. <laughs> Okay. A any other future agenda items people want to bring up at this time? Okay. Item 12 on our agenda. Any other additional comments from the committee or other general discussion items? Okay. Not hearing any. So I think that uh, takes us to the end. Um, and if there's nothing else, I think we can adjourn. Thank you, Ryan. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Right. Love Thank you, back, everyone. Thank All right. You, yeah. Ryan. Hey, we have we have a new requirement. Since this virtual meeting thing is almost permanent, we've been directed to have one of three different backgrounds for our virtual meetings. <laughs> this is one of them. <laughs> That's nice. So, all right. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye. See you. Thanks. Take care. Take care. Take care.